Hi there. Uh, first of all, I'd really like to thank everybody for the help and support provided. It's been absolutely fantastic and I've received uh, quite a few very, very useful tips. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, now, following my last video, I was contacted by a guy called Andrew McWhirter, uh, who I believe lives in Australia. And he asked me whether or not I'd um, considered making uh, my own digital speed display for the uh, mini lathe and the mini mill. Uh, both the uh, SC3 and the SX2P have um, a 7 pin DIN um, on them where you can attach uh, a SIEG speed display and uh, unfortunately they cost around in the UK just under £110 and Andrew um, sort of very kindly uh, provided me with uh, details of all the parts necessary and the software needed to be able to make your own and it only costs about just over £10 which is incredible really um, so this video is going to show you how to make a digital speed display now um, I'm not sure whether it will fit into just one video or whether I'll have to have a part one and a part two but anyway we'll see how we get on okay so uh, as far as the components are concerned um, here you have the uh, Arduino uh, Nano version 3 processor with a mini USB cable uh, that little bundle there costs about £4. Next item is a four digit display which is 0.56 of an inch and this is specifically for the uh, Arduino and it's got a TM1637 driver in it. That costs about £2. You need uh, some thin gauge wire so here I've um, just got some sort of patch leads um, which I can use. Um, Next on the list is a 7 pin DIN female connector which I'm waiting for. Um, th the cost of that is around about £1. Um, oh and by the way these um, connectors probably cost around about a couple of quid as well. You need a soldering iron and um, some solder and some flux and you need a wiring diagram You also need a computer um, with the uh, Arduino development software installed on it, uh, which, which is free for download. And uh, the uh, computer needs a USB port so you can connect uh, the processor up directly to the computer. Uh, the Arduino software uh, to read the data um, from the mini mill or the mini lathe uh, is needed. Now, Andrew uh, McWhirter, um, he took some existing software and uh, made some modifications to that. So um, I'll somehow make that available um, if, if anybody wants it. And obviously that's free. Um, I might actually make some modifications to that myself as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll see how we get on. Um, you also need this special um, Arduino TM1637 library uh, which is fr again free and that supports the uh, four digit display. Um, you also need a project box to hold the assembly and um, I've got here um, some Perspex sheet so I think I might try and make my own box out of Perspex. Um, that cost of that is probably a couple of pounds as well. Um, nice to haves. Um, I've got over here a breadboard with some uh, patch leads on it um, to help with testing. Uh, that can be quite useful uh, but not a necessity. Also a multimeter to help with testing uh, is a nice to have. And uh, this little thing down here is a board that you can place the uh, nan um, the nano processor inside, so that actually um, reduces the need 
to do soldering on these pins here um, and it also helps um, with mounting as well because the holes on here for mounting are a lot larger than the holes in the chip. Having said that I'm not too sure whether I'm going to use that. That was quite expensive, £4, so it, it does increase the overall cost quite significantly when you consider that the, the actual uh, Arduino um, device only costs £4 as well. OK, so uh, let's see how we get on. OK then, so uh, to keep things as simple as possible I have decided to uh, use this uh, board here. So it's just a matter of um, making sure you get the right pins uh, in the right holes. And in theory, once they're lined up, it should be just a matter of pressing it in. Gradually, one side at a time. Okay, so that was easy. So now I've decided that I'm going to uh, solder these wires on here. But on the display, I'm going to keep these little connectors here. If you can see that. I don't know how reliable these will be um, but if they prove not to be a good fit on here I can always go back and solder them. Okay so that's the soldering done and uh, these connectors, connectors have fitted on well here so what I'm going to do is go to the computer and just run a test program just to, to test that the uh, library works and uh, that I can get a display up here working correctly. Okay so uh, you'll have to excuse the uh, poor quality of video at this stage. Um, I've already written a test program um, so I'll just double click on the uh, source code and that'll bring up the uh, Arduino IDE And from here I can just record onto the computer what I'm doing. OK, so this test program that I wrote um, is based upon some code that I extracted from the original program. And uh, it includes this uh, TM1637 display library. And it's got a few definitions in here. And in the setup it sets the brightness the display and sets the initial display to uh, init uh, th but this program will th there's no delay here so this program will um, quickly overwrite that and then the main loop um, it goes through and displays stop with a delay and then it will show the RPM of zero with a delay and then 1, 2, 3, 4 with a delay, 2, 3, 4, 5 with a delay, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc, etc. And then right at the end, it'll um, start the RPM at 10 and increment it by 1 um, until it gets to 9,999. So for each of those iterations, it'll display the number. And... Uh, there's a small delay here, uh, just to slow it down a little bit. Um, so, uh, to run this, we uh, click on this to upload. So, the um, 
device is connected to the USB port and we'll just upload. Down here it says it's compiling the program. Compiled and it's uploaded. Now here we can see that the program is now running. And that's going through counting one at a time right up to 9999. So that actually proves that my wiring works and the library routine works as well. Um, so I'm very very happy with that. So we can now move on to the next stage. So this is a bit of footage showing me uh, milling the perspex for the enclosure. So far so good. So I've just attached the uh, Arduino board to the back of the display case and It's a very good fit. Very happy with that. So all I need to do now is to cable up the 7 pin in and uh, put the program onto the board. Well the 7 pin uh, DIN female connector has arrived so I've just uh, soldered up wires onto pin number 1, 2, uh, 5, 6 and 7. So now it's just a matter of attaching the wires from the 7 pinned in to this uh, little board. And lastly I just want to uh, put a little clip on here to stop the cable from uh, pulling out of the side. And I think we're good to go. So this is the um, Seek Tacos version 10 software that's been loaded into the IDE. Um, the Arduino um, is connected to the USB port on the computer so it's just a matter of uploading it so down here it's saying compiling uploading job done so let's give it a try well, that was a really exciting project to undertake. Uh, I really enjoyed myself and uh, I'd really like to thank Andrew McWhorter for initially providing all the information and encouraging me to have a go at this. Uh, but secondly, uh, I can't thank a guy called Jeff Nelson enough for doing all the initial legwork. Um, the guy's an absolute genius. He um, did loads of work interpreting the signals coming from the port at the back and uh, working out how to program it um, is amazing is the bloke and uh, he's got a site called macpod.net and uh, if you don't fancy um, doing all this on your own uh, you can buy a digital speed readout kit from him um, so you don't have to worry about you know all the detail that I've gone through uh, he also produces kits for other things, so his site is well worth a visit and I'll put a link in my description uh, to his website. Um, so, back to the uh, display. Um, apparently it is possible to incorporate um, a forward and reverse feature as well. I've not explored that, but it might be something I'll look at in the future. 
And also, what I had planned to do is to put this uh, little LED array alongside um, the readout. And this display is sort of green, um, sort of amber red. Um, and I was hoping to put that alongside and reprogram it to show you the, the appropriate colour depending on the speed. Now unfortunately that has only just arrived so I, I just didn't have time to do anything with it but uh, again maybe that's something I'll look at next time. So in terms of the uh, readout it, it's just fantastic. I've put some rare, rare earth magnets on the back so it just sticks on there. Um, power on. Init for initialization and stop to say it stopped. Now this has got a speed range it says here of 100 to 2500 and if we just start it slowly or back it off a bit we can actually get it down to just slightly less than 100 and these figures here will be absolutely spot on because it's getting all the data from the port at the back and then if we increase it gradually so registering 2480 so again that will be spot on and very close to the maximum it states here So, all in all, I'm absolutely over the moon with it. Um, anyway, I hope you like my videos, and if you do, please subscribe, and uh, I hope to see you later. Cheers. Oh, and I've just thought, um, if you want any more information about um, gaining access to the program, or where to buy all this uh, stuff for the kit from, um, just PM me. Uh, your email details and I'll email you the stuff across. So thanks again.